thank you everybody. Um, so um, first of all, I would like to like uh, make an overview, a very, very short overview about uh, the situation uh, um, in China regarding uh, rabies. And uh, China, uh, as many of you probably know, it's like the second country after India uh, to hold the highest number of uh, uh, incidents of human rabies uh, every, every year. And, uh, and, you know, it is estimated that almost like, uh, like four, five, four, four fifth of, the, of all human rabies comes from dogs. Considering that, for example, China has also the uh, biggest uh, pet population in the world with approximately 180 million pets between dogs and, uh, and cats, and many of them are stray animals. And uh, the reason, uh, main reason of uh, uh, like uh, this uh, high, still a high incidence of uh, or rabies in the country is uh, because still uh, not everybody is uh, uh, vaccinating the dog. Well, in the big cities, of course, uh, you have more uh, communication and education. So people uh, have a tendency to uh, take their pets to uh, the veterinarian and, uh, and therefore, you know, having them vaccinated but when we go outside uh, in, in the countryside, uh, uh, that is very difficult. And, and China is a big country with some region where, you know, uh, there, are, there is no uh, veterinary coverage. And uh, uh, a study in particular also have uh, uh, assessed that they found out that uh, um, human rabies also has a, a seasonal trend. And in particular with the number of cases like rising uh, uh, during uh, like uh, um, in, um, in spring and, uh, and in winter. Um, there was a, an interesting uh, study that tried to uh, estimate, it was done in 2015, they tried to estimate the, um, like, uh, the, how rabies can impact uh, on the economy of the, of the country worldwide. And, uh, and in particular regarding, uh, regarding China, um, it was uh, uh, very interesting to see that, for example, uh, the number of, uh, of, uh, of human deaths per year were like around 6,000. Uh, but uh, the uh, actual estimation of a possible like a uh, real number of human rabies could be like much much, much bigger, around 300,000. And uh, um, rabies, of course, uh, uh, not only has an impact uh, on the, you know, directly on the, on the human being, on the life of the human being, but also in the economy. And in particular, it was interesting to observe that, uh, for example, in the livestock industry in China, there is a quite um, big impact of rabies on, uh, on, um, on the farm animals. And, uh, and for example, there was a, a, this uh, colleague of mine who uh, sent me uh, these two videos showing uh, cows with uh, um, symptom of rabies. So this, this cow, this cow uh, is the one affected with rabies, uh, and, uh, and you can see uh, in a moment that has a lot of salivation. And uh, I just make it forward. Sorry, it's very slow. <laughs> and okay, stop it. Stop this one. And then this one, it's another one where you can see uh, this animal also. She told me actually she was recording the, the video and uh, in a certain moment she had to escape and she got also hurt because she fell down and uh, in, a, you know, in the attempt to avoid the attack of the animals. 
So, and she told me that uh, approximately 50% uh, uh, of the cows in the farm are affected and die every year uh, because of rabies, uh, at least in the farm that uh, she assects. She is a, she's a, in a, um, she's a, an epidemiologist, a veterinary epidemiologist. She study um, other type of disease, but she came across uh, this uh, estimation. And uh, so the impact uh, in, uh, on the economy of the farmers, it's, uh, it's pretty big, it's pretty huge. Um, so my uh, experience uh, with uh, uh, rabies education, uh, I'm a professor in the university, but also I'm a veterinarian. And uh, I arrived in China in 2007, and I started to um, collaborate uh, with uh, uh, different veterinary hospital in uh, Beijing. And uh, suddenly I started to um, like get like uh, information uh, that uh, um, cases of rabies uh, of human, like of people dying for rabies in Beijing were happening every, every year. So, and uh, um, in particular, it was very interesting that I remember in 2007, 2008, 2008 and 2009, at the beginning, the first two uh, months, the first two months of, uh, of each year, uh, there was like, uh, um, like came out news about three, four or five people dying uh, of rabies. And we are talking about Beijing, of course, it's 20 million people, uh, it's a city of 10, 20 million people, so five people is very little. But for me, it was like, uh, uh, like huge thinking that uh, a modern city in a big city, still people could die uh, for rabies. Uh, and uh, so I uh, started during my work uh, with, uh, you know, I'm a veterinarian behaviorist. So I start uh, not just uh, like working from the behavioral point of view, but educating also the clients, the public about uh, the importance of vaccinating their pet, the, important, the importance to uh, like uh, understand what is rabies and what to do to avoid it. And uh, so I collaborated, for example, also with IFAO um, during uh, in 2010, 2011 uh, for uh, like education for uh, in the uh, local shelters in Beijing. And uh, then uh, an interesting fact was that uh, uh, also it came, I came across with the information that, for example, in 2010 in Beijing, there were around 200,000 dog accidents. I mean, uh, like registered, like uh, when people were going to the hospital, so they were monitored. And, uh, um, and most of them, of course, were children. And uh, so 200,000, but of course, they one that were not recorded probably were like double or more. So I, you know, being also a mom, and uh, I decided that uh, as a veterinarian, as a behaviorist, I could do something to educate also children in the school, especially the small kids. Here, the picture you see in the kindergarten, because they are the uh, main victims uh, of uh, dog attacks. And uh, so to educate them on how to properly interact uh, to, with a dog when they you know, have a dog in their house or when they encounter a dog outside in their neighbor. And, uh, and then, of course, also to the teacher and to the parents educated them about the rabies prevention. So for uh, the occasion for this uh, education program, uh, I created a story, Matteo in Doggy War. Matteo is uh, the name of my son. At that time, he was around two years old. And, uh, and he was thrilled, of course, uh, to have a story about, you know, about him and a dog. And uh, the story basically uh, was used to introduce the children to the subject on how to behave around dogs. And of course, in the story, there is a key who doesn't understand uh, the body language of a dog and uh, it gets beaten. And, uh, and of course, he has to go to the hospital and, you know, and get the vaccination and, uh, and also the dog. So, and but then, okay, the book talks about on how you can recognize when actually a dog is happy to encounter you or when a dog, you know, is better to just leave him alone. And uh, the book was published in 2017, uh, so many years later, and is on Amazon. But basically, I use this book during my educational program. 
And uh, so uh, then uh, as a veterinarian, I try really hard to like uh, to convince people, you know, around me like veterinarian to organize uh, like uh, um, like uh, an event where we could educate the public. Uh, it was not easy at the beginning. Then finally, I like I met a colleague of mine uh, in the university I used to work before and she introduced me to uh, the vice president of Bühringer Hingelheim. And so I proposed to them if they were willing to sponsor a, um, a rabies campaign in Wuhan where we could vaccinate for free a certain number of, of pets. And so we started in 2017 and uh, it was a very small, it was just 100 uh, free vaccine, but you know, for us, it was like big things. And it was held at the very beginning inside the College of Veterinary Science of Fuajon Agricultural University. And, uh, um, and uh, the, in, the nice thing was that uh, during uh, the campaign, there was this lady who came from a local neighbor who heard about the event. And she came and she said, I don't have the money to bring my, my dogs and cats. I have 20 dogs and three cats. Could you you please come and vaccinate them so we went i mean we took you know uh, like the vaccine and we went to her neighbor and then she also called other people around who had dogs and and they came and they were like very surprised they didn't believe that actually we were delivering delivering vaccination rabies vaccine for free and uh, and so it was the first uh, my son he was nine at the time and he gave a speech in chinese uh, talking about uh, like uh, talking like representing children and uh, an animal because uh, since the very beginning the campaign I tried to organize they were all about children and animal and in this speech he talks about you know how an animal who uh, is sick is not the enemy so a dog and a cat or any other animal any, any other mammal who has rabies is not the animal is not the enemy but is uh, an individual who actually needs our help and uh, and of course, uh, we, um, we educate the public uh, during this campaign because at that time, um, the, yes, the, uh, the materials uh, uh, available on the GARC website were mainly in English. Actually, there were, I remember, two uh, flyers uh, in Chinese, but you know, I didn't, I didn't actually realize that that Chinese was not the Chinese simplified, but there was the Chinese traditional from Taiwan. So when I show it to my colleague, they got almost an heart attack. So, and, uh, so I said, okay, no problem. And, you know, we have so many students, uh, you know, uh, from the foreign language department, let's give them an opportunity to practice and translate all the material. So we translate most of the educational material on GARC website for the World Rabies Day and uh, involving all the students and also the media department of, uh, uh, of the university so that we could have the flyer and the booklets in Chinese so that everybody could understand. And, and, and use it. So, and that was the first rabies campaign. And uh, of course, uh, with the years, we grew a little bit. I mean, I'm not an NGO. I'm a, I'm a professor from a university and a veterinarian. And as a veterinarian, I felt to have the duty to help my communities around me. So what actually I did is like knocking at the doors of the veterinarians and asking if they were interested to uh, hold to host a rabies campaign and uh, so at the moment we have two veterinary hospitals in Wuhan like it's a veterinary like a, a chain of veterinary hospital uh, who actually were interested to uh, like host the campaign each year so 2018 2019 we had two campaigns in 2020 another one and uh, every year Beringers uh, offer a certain number of uh, vaccine and then the nice thing was that uh, the veterinary hospital also like offer for free like the same or more the same amount of, of rabies vaccine or even more 
compared to the one like offered by the like uh, by the company in a, in a way that if there were like 200 people or 300 people who came on the uh, rabies campaign side they still could get a free rabies shot and uh, as i said um, my the rabies campaign is all about the community so the nice things we had i had is that actually people start to realize the, that we organize this event and they start to contact me say hey i would like you know i'm a teacher from the school and i would like my uh, my students involved in your event they can come and talk about their experience of rescuing animal and uh, like uh, also the uh, Wuhan Small Animal Protection Association participated and so different people who could bring something and help in uh, organizing this event to educate also the rest of the community they participate and the interesting thing was which i'm very happy about that every year even though i don't at the beginning maybe i don't say immediately hey we are going to start to organize the next rabies campaign i have these people from the community also new one who contact me say hey are you going to do the rabies campaign also this year because i would like to help and um, so this is very great and uh, as i said um the rabies campaigns I organize are all about children. And for example, in 2019, I involved the school of uh, my son and uh, the primary kids, they um, drew a uh, like painting with the human animal bond sub subject. In total were 25 paintings and uh, um, they were like, they sold the painting at the campaign, they collect the money and they bought food uh, and the litters and vaccination for uh, a local um, stray animal shelter. And uh, this was also in from me like a, a way to like show these kids that uh, even though you are small, you actually can uh, contribute to make a change in the community. And actually the, this campaign with my son's school was a second campaign of the year in Wuhan. And it was uh, created because of a little girl painting. Uh, one day I went to this museum and I saw this painting that actually you can see uh, in the picture with the kids. And, uh, and I had an idea on how kids could actually contribute with their paintings and participate in being actors. And uh, Sarah, you have so, 10 seconds. So, okay, okay, um, almost finished. So here you see other, other uh, picture of the campaign. So kids are always uh, the, main, uh, um, the main actors. Uh, I gave speeches also uh, in the community to families uh, in different events uh, in charities and uh, I involve always my son uh, as a representative of the children uh, in this uh, event. Thank you.